Thanks for staying with us. We're at the KDA office. We're joined by Karen. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Um, international trade is so important to Kansas farmers. I, I, we were just talking before we started shooting. $3.3 billion last mm -hmm. year. That's a big number. It is. It is. When you look at our overall economy and you think $3.3 .3 billion originates from agriculture commodity trade, it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And, um, you know, trade does matter in agriculture because as we look as a country, um, we export about $150 billion in agriculture commodities across the globe. So looking at Kansas, that $3.3 billion goes to about 98 countries globally. Mm -hmm. So um, our top three, just, just for our viewers, just for curiosity, our top th three trade partners are Mexico, um, followed by Japan, and then Canada. So no major surprise, just because transportation north right. and south, and we have a lot of bilateral trade with Canada and Mexico. Um, but then when we also uh, take a look at the commodity categories, we might not have too much surprise when we look. Our top is our meats and raw materials that are exported out of our state, um, cereal grains and oil seeds. So those are our top three categories. So we have the three trade partners um, at our top, but we also have commodities that are um, harvested within our state that go into different types of US AID rations globally. So we're going direct to consumer in some cases, but we're going indirectly through U.S. food aid um, going into some of our countries that maybe don't export as much, but the USDA does position our commodities um, and maximize outlets across the globe. Perfect. Uh, you guys just got back from Russia, and, and but again, we were talking before we started shooting. Um, one of the things that kind of surprised me was cattle genetics. I mean, yep. that is a really big business for the state of Kansas. Yep. You know, the Midwest, we're really lucky. We have a lot of cattle producers in the Midwest that just raise superior livestock and superior genetics. And we've had a long lasting relationship with Russia in terms of trade. Um, Russia's technically and historically been a very good trade partner through 2014 when President Putin at that time issued some um, trade restrictions on agriculture commodities. And I wanna just go back about four to five years ago, um, a Russian company, this is probably our most successful trade relationship, uh, a company called Miratorg, um, started purchasing uh, live cattle and also genetics from Midwestern states. And Kansas was a state where Meritorg um, chose to select Black Angus genetics and live cattle. It was the goal of Meritorg to become self-sustainable in Russia. So over the past five years, Meritorg has been growing small farms of um, Angus beef, uh, black label beef mm -hmm. cattle and are now at a point where they have their farms established and you can experience the Black Angus label in Miratorg stores in Moscow. So it's a neat idea. Right, right. Um, that was one thing that we did get to see. We had a trip in February to Moscow where we took travelers from across the state in partnership with United States Livestock Genetic Export and then um, our STEP program, which is our state trade and export promotion. We were able to go, um, we represented our state at AgriFarm, which is a huge livestock animal um, trade show in Moscow. And then we also were able to go on a retail tour. So looking in a high-end retail all the way to an open air market on how meat and meat products are merchandised within the Russian market. And then we also visited a dairy north of Moscow and um, toured a processing where they did high-end yogurts, um, drinkable yogurts, um, uh, different types of milks um, into the Russian and Moscow market specifically. Perfect. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the next trip coming up at the end of the month. We're on your Kansas Ag Report, and we'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com.
Thanks for staying with us. We're at the KDA office over in Manhattan, um, and we're talking about international trade, and that's what you do here at the state, yep. is you handle international trade for the state of Kansas. And uh, by the time this airs, uh, like you said, by the time this airs, you guys are probably almost into Mexico. Yep, yep. We have a trade mission um, today, the 24th, that's heading into Mexico. We're partnering with the U.S. Grains Council, and then again, it's state trade and export promotion program through the Small Business Administration. And we're taking producers into Mexico who have an interest in corn and corn byproducts, distillers grains, and ethanol. Um, one thing that's important to know about Mexico as a country is the um, fuel system. So the gas pumps that are in the Mexican market are going through deregulation. So now um, companies can go in and an ethanol blend is something that's possible going forward. So historically, Mexico has owned all the gas stations, but now um, that is changing, which is good for us because it opens opportunities for ethanol and ethanol blends to enter the Mexican market for and, fuel. And there's, uh, what, 17 ethanol plants here in the state of Kansas. Yep. So it's, I mean, it's, yep. it's potentially big business for us. Distillers grain is also a very big mm -hmm. business for, the, for us in the state of Kansas. Yep, absolutely. And you know, just as a reminder, Mexico is such a good trade partner. Last year, they were our number one mm -hmm. trade partner, um, and they imported over $841 million worth of agriculture commodities from our state. Mm. Yeah. Uh, does that include not only commodities, but um, tractors and uh, things like that, parts or genetics and all that other stuff? Yep, that goes so this is, yep, this is the agriculture commodities. Okay. Um, the agricultural equipment piece is tracked through manufacturing. Okay, gotcha. So that's not necessarily tracked as an agriculture commodity. So what are you hoping to get mm -hmm. from uh, the Mexico trip? Mm -hmm. uh, maintaining trade relationships. Okay. You know, as a state, we really want to be able to tell our partners globally, thank you and how much we appreciate their partnerships. Mm -hmm. You know, the partnerships take years and years and years to develop within trade. And our farmers and ranchers see it this year with a lot of grain on the ground. We don't necessarily have a large number of outlets to absorb the surplus that we have. So when trade negotiations, when trade partnerships are being negotiated, it's important for us to take our producers into countries so they're meeting with those in buyers who are buying our products or making the buying decisions and let our producers really tell them thank you and how much their purchases and our trade partnerships matter to communities all across our state. And real quick, uh, we've got a trip coming up uh, to Brazil mm -hmm. and China. Yep. And go to the KDA website if you would like to attend one of those trips yep. and find all the information you need. You're watching Kansas Ag Report, and we'll see you in just a minute. If you would like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call, 785-580-3287.